everyone, and welcome to a Time Shifters podcast, Time Hop Edition. This is your host, Christopher. With me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, Tom. Tom, how are you doing? I am well. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. We had a uh, opportunity to watch a film that just came out this year in 2024. The thing is available right now on Amazon. Uh, I think you do have to spend a couple bucks to rent it. It is called Dead Hand. It was written and directed by John Francis McCullough. It's it about special, special agent Ian Flynn, who's assigned to track down Matthias Frost, a terrorist responsible for kidnapping an expert involved with a mysterious... Kidnapping a computer expert involved with a mysterious device. Uh, Flynn's bosses suggest he tried to recruit a member of the terrorist gang who they think could be convinced to help them. When that gang member ends up turning on the big boss during a heist of one of the device's components, Ian has to find the young man, protect the device, rescue the kidnapped computer expert, find out what the device does, and take down Frost once and for all. Now, going into this, knowing that it was supposed to be an action film, yeah, and it's an independent film, and I don't know how many independent action films you've seen, I've tried to watch a couple, and one of my biggest problems with any of them is where the heck's the action? Right. <laughs> this film actually delivers some. It does. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be one of those shows, is it? Uh, yeah, because uh, I've been germinating this idea, letting it wash over me as, a, as I've experienced this film, and I'm convinced that um, this felt like <laughs> this felt like a, a student filmmaker who also happened to belong to a suburban martial arts studio said, "Hey, it would be really cool if we demoed some martial arts and maybe I'll m- make a film work around it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but is that really such a bad thing if you're actually going to do an action film to actually have people that can do action i mean now now granted yeah like uh, it was a very good martial arts demonstration i i i felt like they knew their stuff but none of it was acting or writing or storytelling (laughs) i didn't think it was all that bad i this film actually took me back to watching like a uh one of the old Hong Kong Bruce uh, uh, Jackie Chan films or even a, uh, a Jet Li movie. I would give you that. Well, and it would, with the broken English, that, that might help. Because <laughs> from, from like the Jackie Chan movies when you're watching them dubbed, uh, <laughs> line delivery was just that, line delivery uh, for the most part. I, I didn't feel like these people were the people that they said they were. That's um, interesting. You know, my wife, she watched it along with me, and she mm-hmm. said something very similar. She thought it was very stilted and, very and robotic and wooden. Yeah. I didn't pick up on that at all. Not <laughs> no. not really. Well, and, and then I struggle with, uh, without getting anything away. I mean, we're, we're dealing with a, a terrorist that has, like, end-of-the-world plot kind of in him. And yet everyone seems hesitant to kill anybody. <laughs> so, and, and besides, why, why would you whip out a gun and just wipe out your enemy when you can just beat the living crap out of them with martial arts? Uh, it, it, everything was an excuse to punch and kick and jump and roll and all of that. And, and I'm like, none of this matches up with the plot you're trying to tell. If it's this doomsday-ish, come in Guns blazing, wipe out the bad guys and move on. There, we're talking end of the world stuff here. Uh, <laughs> and, no, and you're I, sending, uh, you're sending a kid that just turned a guy uh, from an agency. We don't even know what it is or why they exist. Really, they're kind of uh, the way they they kind of describe it through the film. It, it's supposed to, it was reminiscent of either a Kingsman kind of idea. Um, I also got a real big taste of like ISIS from Archer, um, which is a uh, they're they're an espionage organization for hire, and that's kind of what this felt like too. But it's just like, okay, either way, the, you've made a really big deal about what's happening in here, 
but you're not sending resources to take care of it like it's a really big idea. <laughs> no, I see your point. I take yeah. your point. You and your your points are not wrong, but I think I honestly felt like this was and the fact that they didn't go in guns and blazes and instead use their fists and their feet. Yeah. I, I, I felt like it was a little bit of an homage to the films that I was referring to, you know, the, the police stories and, oh, and sure. that sort of thing. No. And I, I, and I can see where you're coming from with that. It just, uh, because it's, I, I don't know how many films our director has made, uh, but, um, it, it came off a little film school, like first attempt kind of stuff. Okay. Interesting. I, it definitely came across to me as an independent film. There was yeah. it. It was definitely lacking some of the the spit and polish that you would find in like a a big budget Hollywood type of film. Sure, but it was a lot better than some that I've seen. <laughs> oh no, we we've seen far worse than this. Uh, it, it, it's an entertaining film, but you, you you're definitely going in. This fits comfortably in a cheesy B movie category for me. Yeah. Well, and you know me, I'm a sucker for a cheesy B movie. So maybe I, that's why it it appealed to me a little bit more than it <laughs> might to some. It it does tickle that spot for you a little bit more, but but yeah, and, and it's one of those I you you make the point. They these the people in here that are doing the action sequences are the people in here doing the action sequences. Um, so that's that's great, but I feel like they were hired because they can do that part and not for any acting skills whatsoever. Uh, it, it's possible. Yeah. I just I remember going back if you remember when we watched uh, Lion Girl. Yes, and we we were saying that all the pieces were there, all these elements that were building up, and you're talking about you know she's trained in six forms of martial arts and she has magic powers and all this stuff, and you're waiting for it, and it comes down to two people standing across from each other, staring at each other, and one of their heads explodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Yep. what? <laughs> yeah, not a lot of delivery in this case. Yes, you got lots of lots of good martial arts. Mix them up action sequences uh in fact I, I almost guarantee everyone was trained in a way that they were a, capable of sparring with each other they may have even made contact just knowing how to make contact without actually hurting each other mm -hmm. but no it was great for that but it was kind of like fast forward to just those parts everything in between <laughs> was kind of pointless and, and, and i'm sorry but uh one of the bad guys who's friends with the bad guy that turned good guy both of them look like they're 12 so. yes you know actually i kind of liked um nico is the character you're talking about mm -hmm. very baby-faced very i actually sort of liked that about him considering the character that he played because he was a character that i felt like was constantly trying to prove himself and i'm thinking this is the kid that was constantly bullied and went to like to a martial arts school yeah and then ended up actually being really good at it but he still got a chip on his shoulder yeah. and so you could see where he could be indoctrinated into this terrorist's uh ideals yeah, but you gotta, again, since there's not any character development really of any kind in this, we really don't get any sense of what his motivation, he looks like he just gra graduated high school, if if he graduated high school. That's that's all my own headcanon kind of being, <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> putting on it. I, there's nothing in the film that would give you that, but... No, which, which is the part, I, I know your head will fill in the blanks, but <laughs> I, I need a little bit more meat to hang on that bone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and actually what he was really giving me vibes from, um, have you ever seen Kick-Ass? Yes, sure. Yeah, the, the kid that was the bad guy in Kick-Ass, where he's just a spoiled brat with, with costume and all of that. I was getting that kind of vibe from from the Nico character, uh, kind of like, yeah, I, I, I know how to fight, but I don't really know why. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I think it kind of worked. Again, my own head is filling in and going, no, th- this makes sense. I got this whole backstory. <laughs> Well, and then we got a little bit of backstory about our our hero-like character, Johnny May. Um, and it just he just mentions having hurt people in the past. And, and I'm like, oh, okay, but how does that translate in you being a potential bully and becoming a terrorist? That's still a bit of a leap, especially since the two of you seem like fairly squeaky clean kids <laughs> yeah a little bit of some comment some backstory uh just how, how did you get involved with this guy uh kind of kind of scene would have maybe been appropriate oh and, there, and then there's a with the actual terrorist uh, what was his name again? frost frost yeah there's a very awkward scene where he's where he's having a, a phone conversation with his Ru- Russian agent woman, um, who is really laying the accent on thick, uh, and all of a sudden they're in this heartfelt conversation. I'm like, mm-hmm. aren't you guys terrorists? You want to end the world, and you're having a tear up moment about how things didn't go well. Like it was rough. <laughs> yeah, you you do feel like there's a is there a prequel I missed? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get the comic edition that comes the, the the one that you released before the film? So yeah, where's the ash can of this movie? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I mean it, it, it's still fun. It, it, it but I had to take it as like all silly because anything related to the story and the dialogue was just so. Silly. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So there you go. You kind of have a split uh, decision yeah. uh, from Tom and I on this one. Go and check it out if you want. It is available yeah. streaming on Amazon right now. It is called Dead Hand from 2024. If you do go and watch it, please let us know what you think about it. Send us an email at timeshifterspodcast at gmail.com or follow the link in the show notes, as always, to all the social media and let us know there. We'll be back in a week with a full episode. Thank you for listening, everyone. We'll talk to you later. Bye. See ya.